Dictionary, but not actually not Roy Nicholson. Not very many of them. Well, Roy is the original chairman of the Mississippi Tea Party. He's a leftist. He decided to move to Louisiana so that he and his wife could be with their family, that are closer to them. He's a retired project manager with a wife and four children, 16 grandchildren, and nine, nine great-grandchildren. You've been busy. <laughs> My kids were. <work. laughs> In 2009, he was quick to respond to the call by Kim Wade, Mark Mayfield, and others to be a part of the first Tea Party rally in Jackson on April 15th. And by the way, Russ Latino mentioned that he was there. I was there, too. And I think there are probably several other of you in this room who were there. The group asked him to be the project manager and then president of the Mississippi Tea Party when it incorporated a month later. A year later, he led the officers of the Mississippi Tea Party to disband the membership so that the members could form the Central Mississippi Tea Party. We decided to throw off that name, the Mississippi Tea Party, so the Mississippi Tea Party could in become an umbrella group of other groups. That risky sounding move allowed the Mississippi Tea Party to send out a call for the independent tea parties in Mississippi to unite in a statewide coalition so that they could have a more impactful voice in the state. Well, we know that a number of those tea parties are not very active. It's time for you to start rekindling that spirit because we're about ready to lose this country, believe it or not. Roy was the founding chairman of the statewide Mississippi Tea Party and served in that post for four years until 2013. A year ago, he and his family moved to South Louisiana and they live on the North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain where he's completing his book, Understanding American Freedom. Roy Nichols. And thank you everyone for allowing me to speak to you today. I'm so appreciative for Laura putting me on the agenda today and allowing me to tell you about my little project. It's called Understanding American Freedom Project. And I think we would all agree that it's obvious that our country is in deep trouble. I think we'd also agree that some large percentage of our politicians and bureaucrats either completely disagree or are opposed to those founding principles or they're completely ignorant of them. And of course, every day we see more examples that show us that the citizens, especially our youth, are completely ignorant of our history, of our founding, and even the basic ideas that made America the wealthiest and most powerful and the freest country the world has ever seen. Our public schools are leaving them untaught. And our colleges have twisted their views. On top of that, our national parks are actively hiding and distorting our history. So no wonder our country is in such a mess. Most people have no idea that our country was founded on. And, and so they keep trying to solve all society's problems with more and more government. And we're oblivious to the ideas of the Constitution that would actually work. Fortunately, there are many excellent books out there that can remedy this situation. Unfortunately, the people that most need to read those books don't. The Understanding American Freedom Project is also built upon a book. Another book you asked, and what's going to be different about that? Why would they read that when they won't read the others? And I say that's a, a very good question. The book, Understanding American Freedom, is different in two main ways. First off, it is a very simple book dealing with only the most important concepts. Understanding American Freedom is being written in very simple terms so it can be understood by even the less educated. Its objective is to spark the reader's interest, persuade them of the validity of these ideas, and start them on the path of understanding these great subjects. Hopefully then, 
this book would, would be a means that would motivate them and prepare them to read all these other really great books. The second big difference is the manner in which I hope to distribute the book. The method of a project is to distribute the books for free to people and communities in a very targeted manner. The plan is for the distribution to be conducted on many scales through partnerships with individuals and groups, both small and large. Another difference that I hope to see come to pass is that we'll be able to provide a lot of face-to-face -face interaction with these people that need to learn about these principles. Person-to-person -person is really the best way to inform and persuade people, but it also requires a lot of help. They have to have a lot of people involved. In distributing the books, we need a lot of money. In having the face-to-face -face interaction, we need a lot of people. I want you to daydream with me for just a moment. What if we reintroduced the founding principles back to the American citizens? And for that matter, what if we introduced those great concepts to the non-citizens in our country, the illegal aliens? And then what if those people actually embraced these great principles of freedom and individual liberty? What if they then inserted those ideas back into our political discussions and processes? What if liberty was once more the societal and governmental foundation in our country? What if we did those things? What might our country look like then? And what if the Understanding American Freedom Project was just the start of doing that? There's a lot more I could say, uh, but our time is limited, so i just open up if anybody has any questions. Jim? In about uh, 28 plus years, the only person that I have been able to find, and this has been recent, that ever frequently references the preamble of the Constitution is Dan Cillia, 